Shackway, why is Shadow Rider orange on the back? It looks like he got burned. He did that one. Huh? He already reviewed Shadow Rider. Ah, well, but we could always review someone else. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. Hey, Shockwave! You did that. 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 Hey, Shockwave! Oh, you did that. Hey, Shockwave! You know, I've seen so many figures reviewed, masterpiece, mainline, but there's one thing that you still have not yet reviewed. Hey, Shockwave! It's me. I still haven't been reviewed! Review me already! Mmm, yeah, alright. Shockwave is a stinky fart who doesn't pay his rent. What are you doing? Don't interrupt! This is my review, I'll do it the way I want! Understood? Yeah, fine. Good. Now give me a kiss on the cheek. No. Okay, but in all seriousness, Shockwave or Laserwave is a loyal Decepticon taking orders directly from Megatron, only questioning his rule if logic dictates otherwise. But even then, Shockwave will pretty much bend signs to his will to make it happen. Emotionless, merciless, with his only desire to further Megatron's goal of a successful Cybertron under the command of the Decepticons. Alright, let me get this out. Shockwave is my favorite Transformer. His cold dark demeanor, brilliance, and unique traits make him a standout Decepticon. So, of course, I had to get the coin that was optional at the time. For Takara, these were pretty traditional for major masterpiece releases. Shaped like his big breast with his Takara name printed over, it opens revealing the metal coin sculpted with his face and MP29 label. This section also flips up in reference to his target monitor. But this doesn't even come packed. Check out the towering box with a black background and sophisticated white trim that's border. Some of the labels and renders are raised, and on the back it displays everything. I don't understand any of what's written, but I know it's interesting. Inside, he includes the large instruction sheet detailing a lot of the key components along with reference material to get the idea. He also comes with a card making him the best hockey player I own, a gift thing, and a sticker sheet featuring either classic or modern Decepticon labels. There's also a smaller plastic box that you can fill with so many decapitated hands. Now, isn't that a topic we don't bring up at the dinner table? It does become more useful with him, and we'll get to the rest later. As is his Generation 1 form, Shockwave transforms into a sci-fi style rifle or laser Vulcan based on his original incarnation, just without the baggage of brill parts and loud sounds that'll make dogs howling from three countries away. But notably, the colors are very different. This is the first release, and a lot of people were against this being either too dull or too bright. I was fine since it seems these colors were leaning towards his cartoon appearance more than anything. It's actually a much deeper purple in person, and a toy color variant was eventually released as an option too. Well, who's going to use it because it's too big for anyone to hold? It's good it comes with a miniature version. It's not like it's going to grow wheels or flip around becoming a submarine. Usually in the cartoon, he's just floating, but his form is more practical than anything. But since I'm not some enchanting wizard with levitation powers, you can spill out the hands from the box, move the panel out of the way, move up the clear piece, and this can prompt the entire thing up for display. James Cameron's prop is a giant laser, just a point-and-shoot form, but like his original toy, it's built for big kids to hold, so it's good the handle has a good grip using the outer parts of the legs. If only the trigger was easier to get at. Don't worry, Facebook moms, it doesn't fire, and don't worry. Worry 80s moms, it doesn't make the blasting noise anymore that went something like <coughs> On the side of the waist there's a switch. Flip it up and as you hold the trigger, the light at the front of the laser, in reference to the original toy, stays consistent. Let go to turn it off. But with the switch down, the light repeats a faded in and out pattern. So mesmerizing. Shockwave's limbs are pretty obvious, with his big boobies hanging off, making for the perfect weapon. But taking it and going pew pew is where the fun's really at. I do like how the back is formed with the inside of the legs. Even if it's hollow, it's smart. The only thing that really bothers me is the feet sticking out, but you could probably get this to stand by himself now. The round bits look like dials, there's a flip out clear screen, and there's a cable that plugs in two points. I also appreciate the gray bit of detail that springs out and fills the armpit. It certainly feels slicker compared to the original. It's clear this doesn't need to be cleaned up as much, though it changes a few things to avoid parts forming. He's not really hiding, but it is such a joy to handle his classic form in a masterpiece figure. Robot mode! <laughs> I 
think I should really say what I think about this figure. Masterpiece Shockwave is exactly what I want. Not only from a masterpiece, but as a Shockwave hitting those really iconic nods in such a clean way that seems pretty slick by comparison to some cartoon frames. You don't have to remove the cord for any part of the transformation, though I do believe I had to sand down a tab ever so slightly just to get the panel for the head to lock in properly. Besides that, it's a simple transformation, but there's some tricks. The backpack now incorporates the barrel attached to a metal beam, and I love the way the legs use the back of the gun to fill it in. It's not the most clean, but it sells enough, and it's pretty, I guess, logical. Only I say that! There's some die cast in his feet, and the deco retains a pretty consistent color scheme. It really feels like it pulled itself from the TV. The abs are clean, it hides the trigger, thank goodness, and his big boobles keep the complex details inside the clear piece, painted with metallic silver. So he has one eye, no mouth, no nose, but has two ears. Yeah, that makes sense. It's funny how simple shapes are so easy to register iconic looks, like how the triangle reminds you of a Dorito. Every Everything is made properly, with no cyberverse eyebrow. Did someone say, ARTICULATION? Ball jointed head, neck joint, shoulders out and in, forward and back, another out and in, rotation below, elbow bend, ab crunch, waist rotation, hips out and in, forward and back, rotation below, knee bend, foot forward, back and tilt. He looks good in poses, but I will admit, some of this is his downfall. If you're rotating the waist, you have to move the beam back, otherwise it locks it in place. The knees could have been further, and the hips out and in should have used ratchet joints because it's a tad too loose. The hip panels do move out of the way, and those dials look like ass training wheels. Uh, where are my hands? Let's take a look at the accessories. With the box of hands, we can dump it out and use the box itself. It plugs over the backpack, showing a more accurate design option. It's fine, but I wasn't really complaining to begin with. He could also play with himself. I mean, he can use the smaller laser Vulcan and confuse everyone. Is it a baby him? Tabs into the hand, and now toys can enjoy Shockwave 2. Now for the hands, there is a bunch of options. The closed fists have a single hinge, but all the hands use a ball joint. I've already added the normal colored hand and normal colored laser, but there's a second hand if you want no laser. There's an open hand which you can get him to salute, another normal hand in clear purple, along with another laser piece, and open hand using the same plastic. But that's not all, you can bring up the backpack, flip the switch, and there, instant light piping. But for the laser, with working batteries installed, there's another button on the side with a light that follows through the laser. It fades repeatedly, kinda lights up the plastic, but what a pure joy. Oh my, it's Marvel's Iron Fist. He's about the size of an older leader toy, so he sits well with the other Masterpiece toys. And compared to G1, I mean, I love G1, but I think it does complete justice to not only this, but the cartoon style. What can I say? Shockwave is an adored figure for so many reasons. I might be a bit biased, but even then, I think this is an awesome centerpiece for the Shockwave collection, unless you prefer third-party reworks. It was a bit late for him to be introduced with other companies putting a Shockwave in place, but I don't really care. I'm loving this figure so much, and he is one of my favorites. I'd also like to thank Big Bad Toy Store for helping me get this so long ago. Thank you for your kind words. I didn't know you felt that way. I am truly grateful, and I'm proud to be in your presence. Pay rent! Thank you.